handle that's holding the blade to the handle. You paint that in uh, bronze, just so it's a, a different coloured metallic. Yeah. I'm just trying to lock it so that our viewers can really see what's going on here. So yeah, there's a, a, a nut and a bolt that fasten it to the, uh, to the camera. So this bit, the, I guess it would be the tang. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to be bronze, but these nuts and bolts will keep as silver. And because, I mean, I'm trying to be neat, but it's only so neat you can be, unfortunately, when I'm brushing it like this. So. Yeah, but we can always touch it up because so over the primer coat, over the undercoat. So let's get some good old cow's black. I feel that I should have a massive afro for some strange reason. You're feeling, you're feeling the love of the bob. Yeah, fantastic artist that gentleman was. God bless him. You know, I've uh, I've actually got seasons and seasons of his work, which sounds a bit sad, however, until you've watched a lot of Bob Ross, you really won't know how great it is. You know, but sit down, relax, and watch some Bob Ross. And um, I was watching one. I've actually got some on my Creative Zen player, <laughs> so I can watch it in bed, because it's great if you want to get to sleep. You flick on some Bob Ross, and the calming, comforting voice of Bob will lull you to sleep. But... Um, it started the show and he had a little bird on his hand. No, what? No, he didn't. No, I've seen it before when he's had the pocket squirrels. <laughs> okay, but this time he had a little birdie on his hand from a wildlife rescue. Oh. Because he'd been out and he had a great friend who rescued birds and he wanted to bring it into the studio to show the great work she does rescuing these birds. And you think to yourself, how can you possibly top that in any form? You know, in any form of an art program <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> Is he, is he possibly one of the nicest people who has ever lived? Definitely. I think he is. He's a, a very good teacher as well. Fantastic. Well, he pretty much kind of invented the whole method that I use, and in turn I'm forcing Rob to use, for teaching people how to do things, which is the wash, rinse and repeat method of teaching. I mean, he uses, he uses the paint on the wet on wet technique, which he didn't invent. That's actually a Dutch master's technique of working with rep, wet paint. However, he did manage to get it to the masses. And for a complicated technique like that, which he managed to get to the masses, he did it using the wash, rinse and repeat, which is where we show you how to do something in painstaking detail. And then we go and show you again and again and again. And by the time we're done, of course, you're able to repeat and emulate it. Um, but Bob Ross was able to do that with such natural calming style. Yeah. So. And it's strange because you always used to watch it and think, God, how could this how could he ever be more relaxing and more nice? And then he'd be there with his you know, pop, pocket squirrels, or he'd be there with some wildlife he'd rescued, and a short video about the wildlife he'd been rescuing. He genuinely was just a really nice person. It's quite nice, because after he died, he bequested all of his paintings, except for a very few that belonged to his family, to various charities and organisations. That's remarkably unselfish. It's pretty much what, you, what you'd have expected, Bob Ross, I think, mm. as well. It's quite sad, because actually... Um, how are we doing for the metal, by the way? Um, we're doing all right. I'm trying to not go over the flesh. Absolutely. Well, to continue with the anecdote, back in 2001, um, my mother had asked me to get her a piece of artwork. You know, she really fancied investing in a nice piece of artwork. And I was, well, I'll see what I can do. And what I really wanted was, of course, to get her a piece by Bob Ross. Not because I thought it would, you know, accumulate in value over time, but simply because, you know, I really like Bob Ross. And I thought if she has it, then, and no disrespect to you, Mum, love you dearly. When it's time for you to shuffle off the choir eternal, I would end up with a Bob Ross. <laughs> but, uh, alas, it was not to be. The only Bob Ross that I could find, and believe me, it took me a long time to find it. Well, I'll put it in perspective. She ended up with uh, an original watercolour by uh, Salvador Dali. Yeah, yeah, she did. Now, Salvador Dali, of course, was famous for being a commercial whore. And he literally used to bang these things out quite fast, and so we only paid $450 for it. But, um, 
There was a lovely piece from an art gallery in Washington that was closing down. And it was a watercolour from one of his um, Stations of the Cross series, I think. They're beautiful. Yeah, yeah, they're nice pieces. Um, but the Bob Ross that I wanted was $37,000. And if I'd had the $37,000... You'd have bought it. A heartbeat. I like to think that the fundamental basis of everything I've done over the past five years